Oh, hello, hello, lovely people. Yay! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Look at all these participants joining in. Hi, 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 hi. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You guys type in the chat as you join who you are and what you hope to learn here today. Oh, hi, Nicole. Hi, Renee. Lovely. We're filling up, Alex. You're the yeah. man and you're like the, the keynote of the week. <laughs> I'm so excited. Oh, hi, Brenda Florida. She just won a seat at Summer of Yes, Alex. So what? she's all juiced up. Oh, that is super exciting. I have already begun my Summer of Yes. I've decided that my Summer of Yes hairstyle is this little whale spout poof. <laughs> I like your poof. I like it too. I'm into it. <laughs> it's very summer. Yes. Wow. I see Renee. Liza. Um, so uh, for everybody, I'm going to do just a quick introduction. Um, I want to let you all know, please type in the chat. Do not be shy. We want to hear all your comments and questions. Um, yes. And Mallory from my team is here, and Mallory will be making sure that you have links, resources, gathering all the questions. I definitely will have time at the end. Um, I'm going to be telling you about on the, si the on the Six Mastermind and answering all your questions. So, oh look, your fan base, Alex, is strong. People are like, oh my god. <laughs> so. uh, Look at this. Susan, this series has been mind-blowingly amazing. Um, Mandy, thank you so much. That means so much. Hey, Susie in Toronto. Everybody loves your hair. Oh, thank you. Aloha. 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 So beautiful to see you. All right. So, yes, this will be recorded. I know that question's going to come up. I know you guys are horrified by my, per usual, by my screen share, but here... We are succeed and sell. This is the final day with my booberry Alexander Franzen. Um, okay, so many of you are like brand new to me. So I'll tell you who I am. I'm a master certified coach and author. I've written an amazing book with Alex. Alex helped me with that book, Bear. I'm also a wife and a mom been married 27 years to ye old silver fox who I have threatened not to come home early <laughs> and interrupt the webinar um and my kids are turning 20 and 22 in September Ooh, that's that. wild. so I'm obsessed with a lot of things and helping entrepreneurs make money is one of them and so today's topic we're gonna help you learn how to write some email and collect that coin um this is my fam bam. Most of the members are represented except my missing cat, Apollo. Send Apollo home vibes. Welcome. This is just some social proof, y'all. I get around. But let's talk about Alex. Alexandra, who are you? You're like, I always talk about you like you are the premier copywriter walking. Like you are, in my opinion, the most gifted copywriter that's alive. And we get to learn from you today. But you got a bunch of books. Right? Your dog's like, absolutely, bet. <laughs> Zuki's like, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Um, you've written six books. I have all of them on my shelf, including a new deck that you just produced. I can, you have to tell people about your deck and all your wonderful things before the broadcast is over. I'm sure you will, but Alex is like, she's the agent, my agency's head copywriter. So there's that. But on top of that, she's been published everywhere. She has all these books. She is a phenom of information. So unless you're on social media telling everybody they should get their asses in this class, I want you to close your tabs, <laughs> turn off your phone, <laughs> shut down Facebook, and give yourself the time and space to really dive in here and learn from this legend. Who's with me? Everybody's like, I'm so excited. 
Yes, she is the best copywriter ever. Woot, woot. Okay, Alex, enough with my shenanigans. Let's hear from you. Oh, what a beautiful intro to yourself and me and some of the work we've done together, like the Bear Book, one of my favorite projects of all time. Um, hey, y'all, guys, everybody. I, I know some of you in the comments, some of you I've never met before. To reiterate, my name's Alexandra. Most people call me Alex. And we are here today to talk about how to write emails that inspire people to say yes, oh my gosh, yes, 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 sign me up right now for whatever you are offering. I think Susan put it best, emails to get those coins <laughs> for <laughs> your bank account. And I really believe, and I just want to start out by sharing kind of my philosophy when it comes to writing, whether you're writing an email to promote a program that you're leading or an email to promote a book that you've written or any other kind of project, every single email you send out is an opportunity to add love to the world. It's an opportunity to make your recipient's day better than it was before, right? You get to be a day maker with every single email that you send. And whether they purchase what you're offering or not, hopefully they will, but even if they don't, the intention is by sending this email to you, I am uplifting your day. I'm gonna make you laugh, I'm gonna make you think, I'm gonna make you cry, I'm gonna make you smile, I'm gonna make you feel something and feel inspired to do something positive that's gonna send your life in the right direction. So we're always coming at emails from that perspective. It's not just how can I get those coins? Yes, we want the money. Yes, we want the sales. But it's also how can I be a day maker? How can I make their day better than it was before? Y'all with me? Put in the comments if you like that philosophy as a starting point. Say, yes, I want to be a day maker. Yes, that makes sense to me. Yeah. And it's when you come at it from that perspective, then writing these emails to sell your offers is not scary. It's not this like dreadful anxiety drenched situation because you know that whether they say yes and make a purchase today or not, no matter what, you're improving their day. And that feels good, right? It's like when you go into a party and you know that you're going to make someone's day better just by having a beautiful conversation with them. And it's not this like heavy, icky networking feeling. You're just there to be a day maker, be a lighthouse and bring hope and positivity into the room. So let's talk about it. I have for you today a couple of email templates, some approaches that you can work with, with examples. You're going to get these templates emailed to you after this event. So don't worry about like ferociously writing down every single thing we're going to cover. You're going to get all this info emailed to you, rest assured. Um, but before we dive in, I'm going to share my screen in just a second. I want to share a little story with you. I was actually texting this to Susan just a few hours ago because Susan and a couple of other colleagues have a little group chat going on <laughs> <laughs> pretty much every day. So I am like a personal story. So I have a program that I lead. It's called the Tiny Book Course. And the whole point of this program is to help people write a book, specifically write a tiny book, like a short, simple, sweet little book that's maybe 30 to 80 pages long. It's a great option for people who've never written a book before. Maybe you feel overwhelmed by the idea of writing a gigantic book and you want to start with something small. So I've offered this course a number of times, both in person and online. Um, I offered it last year. I offered it the year before that. It's kind of like an annual thing. But this year, um, because of the pandemic, because of the state that the world is in, because of all the things going on, I had doubts. And in fact, I told my co-teacher, Lindsay, I said to her, like, I don't know. I think maybe we should skip it this summer. I don't know if people are in the right headspace. Like, so, I mean, I know so many people here in Hawaii, 30% of our state has filed for unemployment. Like, it's rough times for a lot of people and a lot of people are very, very cautious about their spending right now and rightfully so. So I said to Lindsay, like, I don't know, maybe we should skip it. I don't know if people want to invest in a sort of like non-essential purchase at the moment and writing a book as amazing as it is for many people seems like kind of a non-essential thing to do, right? 
And so Lindsay said to me, and I'm so grateful that she spoke up and shared her mind. She said, I totally disagree. She was like, Alex, I think you're wrong, you know, with all due respect. She said, I think people are bored and I think people are stuck at home. And I think a lot of plans have been canceled and people are looking for something meaningful to do. They wanna take all the chaos and disruption and the sadness and the hopelessness and all the negative feelings out in the world right now and turn this into something that means something. They want, they want to write their book this summer. If not now, when, right? And she planted that seed in my head and I was like, okay. Like I still had doubts, but I was like, all right, I see your point and maybe you're right and let's just go with it. So we started our marketing campaign. We started doing the webinars. We started sending out newsletters. We started emailing people. And you guys, we have almost 50 people enrolled in the course this summer. And that's about double the numbers we had this time last year, the last time we offered it online. And not just the numbers, but the kinds of people who are showing up. Like a woman emailed me personally to say, that she lost her brother recently and she wants to write a book in his honor capturing stories about his life so that she can give that tiny book to his kids like those are the kinds of people showing up for this course and i almost didn't offer it because i thought oh nobody wants to invest in this kind of thing right now so the reason i share this story with you is that if you're having those doubts whatever services you offer, whatever coaching programs, whatever writing programs, whatever classes, retreats, seminars, whatever you do, if you have that little voice in your head saying like, nobody needs me right now, or nobody wants me right now, or it's not the right time, don't listen to that voice. Because in fact, the exact opposite is probably true. People do want to invest in meaningful experiences right now. People do want to improve their lives. People want hope and positivity and inspiration. They want you to be that day maker, right? So remember that, let that voice saying, I do matter, I am needed, be louder. Because that voice is the truth. I wanna share that because I want to help silence that little voice that might be urging you not to promote, not to sell, not to do your thing right now. Yes, Valerie, your voice is shouting, now, 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 good. <laughs> Excellent, now is the time. So on that note, let's look at some different ways that you can write emails to sell whatever it is that you're selling and get people excited to be part of it. So I'm gonna share my screen, but I'll still be watching the comments. I bet yours looks better than mine. <laughs> my screen is very zen. It's very, <laughs> very uncluttered. <laughs> All right, here we go. Share, share. Okay, so let's back up to the top. So just to reiterate, this is right at send it. Get that money. Yes! Yes, and it's all about, yeah, all about the, sending out those emails and other messages that inspire people to say, sign me up right this very second, because that is what we want. So a couple of things we're going to cover. We're going to cover today... First off, my number one tip for writing stronger emails or really for writing anything, and I'll explain what that is in a moment. This is a way to set a clear intention before you begin writing. And if you do this, I promise your writing will be stronger, clearer, more impactful. You'll get better results. Then we're going to look at a couple examples. We're going to look at the three things email, the I'd like to introduce myself email, and the problem solution email. And these are all just three different approaches that you can take when you're trying to inspire someone to hire you or to enroll or purchase your work. And we'll look at what those are in a moment. And then we'll wrap up with just a couple of suggestions real quick on how to sell your work gracefully and compassionately amidst the pandemic that we're all in or really any other challenge that may arise in the future because there will be something else undoubtedly once this initial thing is over. There's my chat, hello. Okay, so let's go through it. First and foremost, feel no do. Those of you who have worked with me before, you have probably heard me share this technique before, but let's go through it again. So feel no do, what does this mean? This means 
that before you sit down to write your web page, your newsletter, your email, whatever it is that you're writing, you take a moment, you gather your thoughts, and you set an intention. And my favorite way of setting an intention is feel no do. So before I write an email to promote the tiny book course, I sit down and I go, okay, what do I want my email recipient, my reader, to feel? What's the emotion I want them to feel when they get this email? What do I want my reader to know? What's the main thing I want them to know or the most important thing I want them to know? And what do I want my reader to do? What's the call to action right now? What's the very next step I want them to take? So this is simple, right? This isn't rocket science. And yet so often I see people kind of dive into writing something and they haven't really taken any time to organize their thoughts. So then what happens? Your writing is kind of rambly, it's all over the place, it's not clear, people read it and they don't really understand what you're asking them to do. It is so powerful to take five seconds and just go, whoa, 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 hold up. What do I want my reader to feel, know, and do? So for example, um, maybe you want them to feel uplifted, you want them to feel hopeful, you want them to feel like change is possible. You want them to feel uh, calm, comforted, supported, welcome, belonging, or maybe not. Maybe you want them to feel like fiery, energized, or even angry, like that kind of righteous anger of this isn't right. We got to do something about this. So there's all kinds of feelings you might want to evoke through your email and you get to decide what that is. What do you want them to know? So there's kind of two levels to this. You want them to know some logistical information about what you're offering, what it's called, when it starts, maybe how much it costs, those kinds of things. But deeper than that, you want them to know a message, right? You want them to know that perhaps today is not over yet. It's never too late to get your day back on track. Or maybe you want them to know you can write a book even if you've never done it before. Or maybe you want them to know you can get into your dream college and get a scholarship and I'm the one to show you how to get there. So there's like the logistical information you want them to know, but even more importantly, there should be a message you want them to know, right? For Susan, for example, when she's promoting her Summer of Yes program that some of y'all may have seen popping into your Instagram. My, my boyfriend, Zach, is now getting Susan in his Instagram. <laughs> Zach, like, I, I know Susan. Zach's having a Summer of Yes. Oh, he's definitely having a Summer of Yes in his wood shop building tables. <laughs> he's having a Summer of Tables. So with the Summer of Yes, Susan wants you to feel uplifted, excited, like you're the queen of summer and you're just getting ready for this amazing, pleasurable summer of joy. She wants you to know that your summer does not have to be boring, right? Even though there's a pandemic, summer is not canceled. She wants you to know that you deserve to have a summer that's exciting and uplifting where you're going to do the things that you've been putting off for way too long, right? And what does she want you to do? She wants you to sign up, get your butt into the summer of yes so that you can be the beach unicorn mermaid that you always believed you could be. <laughs> or garden fairy. Or garden fairy or a waterfall princess or whatever it is that you wanna be. So y'all, I want you to think about something that you are selling or that you intend to start selling soon. Your coaching package, your program, your product, your book, your card deck, whatever it is. Get it in your mind, right? Then think about the future reader, the future recipient, the potential client. Imagine you're about to send an email to that person to announce this offer and put into the comments really quickly, what do you want that person to feel what do you want that person to know? What's the main thing you want them to know? And what do you want them to do? Probably what you want them to do is make a deposit, purchase, enroll. That's usually the call to action. But it might be contact you to schedule a consultation or something like that. So put your feel, know, do into the comments. And don't overthink it. Trust your hut. That's your heart and your gut. Just right from the hut. Hi. Mary says, do hire me. <laughs> yes. 
Exactly. And you need to be that direct, right? You don't want to send out an email where the call to action is a little bit loosey goosey and vague because you're feeling timid and meek and you don't want to just come right out and say, hire me. But with this type of email, the call to action often needs to be just that direct, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Linda, anything's possible. It's never too late to be what you want to be. Sign up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Sue Ann, feel curious. That's great. Mandy says, feel inspired. Know that you've got this. Do, if you want to grow more, sign up with me. Excellent. So I really recommend that before you sit down to write your email, your newsletter, your web page, whatever it is that you're writing, a video script perhaps to promote your offer, that you figure out your feel, no do. You take a little note. I sometimes write it on like a little piece of paper or a post-it note and then stick it on your computer or stick it on your workspace so that as you're writing, you can refer back to it to keep yourself on track. This is a great way to stay really focused, purposeful, intentional with your writing and avoid rambling all over the place. And if you notice yourself kind of going off on a tangent, you can go, okay, well, wait a minute. If I include that, am I really sticking to my original feel no do? Or is that maybe a message for another time? It really helps you to stay on track. Zuki the dog agrees, feel <laughs> no do. Excellent. Okay, keep those feel no do's coming. Yes, Liza or Lisa, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name. Feel hopeful after a divorce. Know that coaching services are available and they can help you. Do schedule a discovery call to know more. Beautiful, very clear, very direct. Liza like Minnelli, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, so now let's look at some emails. So the first email I'm going to share with you is one of my favorites of all time. And I can honestly say that I have used this exact email template to generate, I don't even know how many thousands of dollars <laughs> this email is gold. So I hope you all enjoy. This is what I call the three things email. So the three things email. This one is really awesome for emailing a previous client, someone who's hired you in the past and inviting them to hire you again. However, you can totally tweak the wording a little bit and you can also send this to a dream client who has never hired you before. You're reaching out to a hero or a mentor or a colleague and inviting them to hire you. So either way, it can work. And I actually used for my example today, an actual example of an email using this format that I sent out to a previous client a couple of days ago. And I will let you know what he said in a moment. So, and by the way, again, you're going to be uh, receiving all of these templates via email. So no need to like do screenshots and <laughs> get this information. All of this is coming to you. So here's how it works. Here's my email to my previous client, Robert, who some of y'all might know. I bet you can guess which Robert it is. Yes. So, hi, Robert, three things. One, I saw your announcement that Gathered, that's an event that he does, is moving to North Carolina. I hope those few spots get snapped up so fast. Two, my Peloton bike arrives this weekend. Yes, Did finally. It? I can't really Did it really get there? It's coming today. Y'all, I ordered a Peloton bike literally like a hundred years ago. <laughs> I live in Hawaii, so I think it had to go on a boat like slow speed or something like that, but it is coming. Um, so I mentioned that detail because Robert loves his Peloton and we've been, you know, corresponding and talking about how we can't wait to ride together. Three. Okay, so I actually did like a 3A, 3B. Thank you for hiring me to write the Tadra Call emails and the Hello Broadway emails. So I'm acknowledging a project that I just completed for him. I hope those create amazing results for you and lead to tons of enrollments. Reminding him of the awesome work that I just completed. <laughs> <laughs> and then 3B, I wanted to check and see, do you anticipate that you might wanna hire me for anything else in June or July? Do you want me to write more emails, workbooks, web pages? I'm kind of you know, reminding this busy CEO, hey, remember there's some other stuff that you'd like to hire me to do. If you think you're going to want to hire me for something else, let's chat soon because I want to make sure that I save room on my schedule for you. 
translation. So that Susan doesn't gobble it all up. Before. Dude, I'm like, you gotta like, you gotta like just email me this and say, I'm gonna send this out. So what you want? Or, anyway. or if you don't need anything, that's cool. Have a beautiful weekend. So to recap, this is just a really simple email where you're putting in a quick little list three things. So the first thing can just be acknowledging something you noticed. Hey, I noticed that your, your conference has moved. I noticed you just launched your book. Hey, I saw that your new podcast episode just dropped. Yay. You're just acknowledging and congratulating them on something dope. Point number two could just be something fun, something delightful that you know that they will love. Beyonce just dropped a new single that they absolutely need to know about or something else. Remember, you're writing here to a previous client who might want to hire you again. And then number three, you're inviting them to hire you again. And you can frame this in a way that's very clear and direct, but also like no pressure, right? If you think you're gonna wanna hire me, let's talk soon. Or if you think you're gonna wanna hire me again, here's where you make a deposit. So you're being very clear and welcoming to them, but it, there's still like a no pressure tone to it. You can straddle the balance. So here's the fill in the blank template. Three things, you mentioned something super cool that they're doing, you congratulate them. Point number two, you just mentioned something delightful that you know that they will love, some happy news, a wonderful song, whatever. And number three, you mentioned that you are available right now. You have space for new clients. You would love to work with them again. And you make this feel exciting, but also no pressure. If you think you're going to want to hire me, let's get on the phone. Let's talk. I want to make sure that I save space for you. Yeah? Really simple. I love this email because it's super simple. It's really easy. Our little human brains can really only hold like two or three pieces of information at a time. So the three things format is really short and snappy and it's human. It's personal. It's like you're writing to a friend. And honestly, over time, most of my clients become my friends. So it feels very natural. I don't feel icky at all sending this email. It's a total win-win email. Hey, I want to help you out. You're going to help me out. What do you got? What do you want to do together? That's right, Mandy. It's gentle and clear at the same time. And you can see how you could very easily tweak this so that you're sending it to someone who maybe hasn't hired you before. You could mention something cool that you noticed they're doing, same thing. Hey, I just noticed that your book just came out. I just saw that you're on the New York Times bestseller list. Oh my gosh, amazing, your new website is up. Acknowledge that like you're familiar with their work and you're interested in them. Number two, mention something they'll love. And then number three, same, same. Hey, I'm not sure if you're looking for a social media strategist right now, but if so, I'd love to work with you or describe whatever it is that you offer. Three things. Yes. Is there a substitute for number two in case you don't know them well yet? Yeah, for sure. I mean, really, you can put anything you want as these three things. I do recommend that the third thing is a specific call to action to hire you because that's the point, ultimately. But, you know, you can mix up number one and two however you want. Number two could be, hey, by the way, um, I nominated you for an award. Just wanted you to know <laughs> or whatever it is that you want to say hey, I mentioned you on my blog today. It could be anything. It doesn't have to be some like super personal detail about them if you don't know them that well yet. Oh, Valerie, thank you. Calm as a cool breeze. <laughs> so Nicole, you asked, can you offer tips on number three if the service you offer is really personal? Mental health stuff, money stuff, body stuff, et cetera. Yeah, you know, so I think it depends on who it is that you're reaching out to. Um, I think you could, so if your ideal client, for example, is like someone who does public speaking, they're in the spotlight, they're on stage, I'm just spitballing here. Um, you could reach out to them and say, hey, I noticed that you have a book tour coming up that's so exciting, it looks like you're gonna be in the media a ton. Um, and sometimes when you step onto that big, bigger, brighter stage, you wanna build your squad and have even more support. I'd love to be part of your support squad and help you stay mentally strong as you take this next step and here's what I offer. Something like that. I think there's a way to gracefully um, talk about services that are more mental health related in that somebody, way. Somebody did that to me when they saw that I was gonna be on a book tour. They yeah. did that exact thing and it was, um, it was more like energy an energy mm -hmm. worker. And um, I thought it was really good the way she was like, hey, like, I think you're going to need some extra support when yeah. you're out there doing all that stuff. And I would like to be that person. 
Absolutely. I actually got a similar email from someone, she's a stylist, but as many stylists do, you know, she also works with body image and with visibility and confidence and things like that. This was when I was about to go on the book tour a couple of years ago, and she noticed that. She saw me mention something about it, and she sent me a personal email and said, hey, like, I don't think you know me, but we actually live in the same town. I would love to help style you, and here's what I offer, and we can talk about confidence and body image and have champagne and do all the things. And I was like, sold. <laughs> and I totally hired her. And actually, I, oh my God, this is so weird. I totally forgot. She recommended that I buy a statement ring that I could sort of like hold and it would be my little token before I did a class or a presentation or a media appearance. So I chose this beautiful ring, which is blue calcite. It's supposed to be really calming. And it was because of her. It's, I just remembered that. So these emails work. <laughs> they do work. You worked it on me. Okay. Um, Susan says, do you recommend this as a broadcast email or more of a one-on-one? -on -one? So this particular format, I think, were, I mean, you certainly could adapt it so that it's more of a broadcast to everyone. Um, you would just change up what you're saying as the three things. So the, the point number one might be, hey, I have a new program out. Point number two might be, and here's why you're going to love it. And point number three might be, and here's how you sign up. So you just adjust what the three things are. But you could totally send a mass newsletter that starts with three things, or I've got three exciting things to share with you, or something like that, for sure. But we're going to look at an example in a moment that is more of that one-to-many broadcast feeling. So let's look at another example. So this is what I call the I'd like to introduce myself email. So this is a great email if you want to reach out to that person or brand or company who has never hired you before and might not know you at all. So it's kind of, I mean, you could think of it as like a cold pitch kind of thing. But I really recommend doing this because you just never know. They might be looking for someone exactly like you right now. And I actually have two great examples of this. So I have a client who sent an email very similar to this one to the CEO of Trader Joe's. Somehow she figured out his email. I think she just guessed actually, because you know how like with big corporations, the email is usually like the first initial of their first name and then their last name at TraderJoe's.com or whatever. Yeah. So I think she just guessed what his email was. And she emailed him and just pitched herself in a very similar manner to what I'm about to show you. He wrote back, and he said, this is so eerie. I literally just got out of a meeting where we were talking about how we need to hire a public speaking and communication consultant. Your services look great. When can we start? And that's how she got a super lucrative gig with Trader Joe's. <laughs> She, she asked. asked. She asked, right? So that's the thing. Like, it does not hurt to send out this kind of email. You're not being annoying. You're not being intrusive. You're just introducing yourself. And you're saying, hey, you know, I don't know if you're looking for fill in the blank right now, but if you are, I would so love to be involved. So that's how she got that gig. And similarly, actually, my assistant, Waz, who is the most amazing woman on planet Earth, she sent an email very similar like this to me. And she said, hey, I don't know, this is many years ago, I don't know if you're looking for an assistant right now, but if you are, here's what I offer, here's what I can do, I love what you're all about. And I actually said no. I emailed her back and I said, you know, you sound awesome. I'm not looking for an assistant right now, um, but thanks so much. And I'll keep you in mind. And then I promptly forgot all about it because sometimes I have the attention span of a bumblebee. But then like a year later, she emailed me again. So she asked not once, but twice. And when she emailed me again to say, hey, have things changed? Are you looking for someone now? I was like, as a matter of fact, I am. <laughs> I'm like desperately looking for an assistant. And I hired her and we've worked together ever since. So if you want it, you got to ask for it. And sometimes you need to ask more than once. And that is something that so many people, particularly women, are so timid about, right? You just have to ask. Okay, somebody asked about subject lines for emails like this. Let's get to that in a moment. We'll put a pin in that and we'll get back to it. So let's look at this email. So this is an example that's very similar to one that I helped a friend of mine to write recently. So we start out by saying, hi, whoever's person's name it is. 
my name is whatever your name is, you're a big fan of this company. And you could mention maybe just one or two reasons why you're a fan. You're doing this to indicate, hey, I'm not just blasting this email to every Tom, Dick, and Harry. I know your company. I know your brand. I know what you're about. And I'm really inspired by this. I wanted to introduce myself. And this is the, the key phrase that I think makes it feel clear and direct, but also like no pressure. I don't know if you're looking for a social media strategist right now, or I don't know if you're looking for a whatever it is you do right now, web design, graphic design, dog training, whatever it is. But if you are, I'd love to work with you. Okay, so that's where you're introducing yourself in a welcoming, but also no pressure kind of way, because maybe they're looking for someone like you, maybe they're not. And then here's some things I can do. Okay, now we make a bullet point list of a couple of delightful things you can do if they hire you. And there's different ways you can phrase this. You could say, here's some services that I offer. Here's how I can make your life easier. Here's some things we could work on together, however you wanna phrase it. But the point is you are immediately showing this, this potential client, look at this delightful array of things <laughs> that I am going to bring into your life. I can take photos for Instagram. I can write captions for all your channels. And if you have some wonderful case studies or numbers that you can throw in there to prove that you're really good at what you do, by all means, absolutely throw that in. That's super helpful. If you're a writing coach and nine out of 10 of your clients go on to get a book deal, say that. If you are a sales consultant and most of your clients increase their sales by up to 40%, say that. You know, if you help couples avoid divorce and stay together and 90% of them report more peace in their household, mention that. So any numbers that you can provide is always very powerful. And then again, no pressure. If you're not looking for this right now, no worries. Keep me in mind in case you wind up needing help with this in the future. And of course, email me with any questions. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> And then I always love putting a little PS where you have a link to whatever you want to link to, a link to your website, a link to your services, a link to your pricing, a link to case studies or client testimonials, anything further that you might want to include. So again, to recap, quick little intro, why you love this brand so much, why they speak to you. I wanted to introduce myself, say exactly what it is that you offer bullet point list of a couple of ways that you're going to make this person's life so much easier and better. So they're reading this list and you want them to be going, yes, I need that. And I need that. And that sounds amazing. And holy bleep, I want that. <laughs> so every single point that you mentioned should have that like, yes, effect. And then again, no pressure, you know, just wanted to let you know, here I am, I'm available. Email me with any questions. So we've got a nice fill in the blank version for you that you can try out. And by the way, you guys, I really hope that you will take these emails and run with them immediately. Add your flair, add your info, add your personality. Feel free to adjust things as needed. Send them out. Imagine what could happen if you sent out like two or three of these emails today. You might have more sales by the end of the day. That's the magic of email. Like as much as we whine about email <laughs> now and how overwhelming it can feel at times, it is pretty amazing. One email can unlock so many doors for you. Okay, so let's do a little exercise. So the part where you make a bullet point list of some things I can do for you, put into the comments at least one or two. You don't have to make a whole list. If you were writing to a potential client, a dream client or a dream company, and you're saying, hey, here's some ways I can make your life easier. Here's what I can do for you. What would that be? Put at least one or two into the comments. What are you gonna do for me <laughs> if I hire you? What's the benefit? Nice. And I'm gonna look through some questions while you guys are putting those. Subject lines. Betsy, good question. Okay, I'm going to write that down.
Brenda, I'm so glad you feel excited about sending emails now. <laughs> That's what I love to hear. Increase your income, reduce your imposter syndrome, yes. Increase goal success rate to 95%. Sign me up. That's, That's right. Great. Increase your income, help you find your dream job. Yes, Patricia, fit exercise into the day and get excited about exercising. Make exercise fun instead of a chore. Boom, you just gave me three very good reasons why I should hire you. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Enjoy the change process. Yeah, what if changing can be fun instead of something that you dread? So somebody had asked, you know, is it a good idea maybe to mention, hey, if you're not looking for someone like me right now, keep me in mind, pass my info along to a colleague or pass my info along to somebody who might need what I offer. Yeah, for sure. I don't think it hurts to include that at all. And you could include that as a PS or you can include that in the body of the email. Um, I mean, I've gotten emails like that. I got an email a couple of months ago from a graphic designer who, um, unfortunately, due to pandemic-related reasons, got laid off from her job. And she emailed me and said, hey, you know, are you looking for more graphic design services right now? I wasn't at the moment. But she did say, if you could pass it along to any of your colleagues who might be looking for a designer, that would be awesome. And I did. I forwarded her email to about three people. So certainly doesn't hurt to do that. Um, you can give it a try. Why not? Why not ask, right? It can't hurt to ask. Referrals, yes, says Lauren. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, you guys, let's look at one more email. Oh, subject lines. That was a question somebody asked. So for the subject line, you know, it can be anything you want. I wouldn't overthink it. The subject line could be, hello. The subject line could be, wanted to introduce myself. The subject line could be, um, you know, introduced by or referred by, and then name of a friend or colleague who has introduced you. Um, the subject line could be something like social media. I mean, you could put like your services in the subject line, although that might seem a little spammy. Like if you put like marketing services available, that might seem a little too general. Honestly, I would just go with like, hi. Hi, Tanya, or like referred by Susan or something really simple like that. What do you think, Susan? What, what, what kind of subject line would grab yeah. your eye? I would definitely keep it. I wouldn't put like, like life coaching services available or yeah. I wouldn't put anything about like the actual industry, but mm -hmm. I like hi. Um, I like referred by Susan and I mm -hmm. like, it could be like, um, uh, what was the one? Somebody had got me to open something the other day and it was a subject line that was like related to um, something I'm obsessed with, you know, mm -hmm. so it was like, yeah. if you like Lizzo, you're gonna love this. Yeah. Um, you know, that kind of thing where it like shows you know something about them. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. So I am very public about the fact that I'm obsessed with Tiny Ducks and Mr. Rogers and magicians such as David Blaine, and <laughs> <laughs> so on and so forth. So occasionally I'll get emails from someone I don't even know. From and it's David like, Blaine. From David Blaine, right. And they'll be like, from I mean, I would open that email <laughs> for sure. But the subject line will be something like tiny ducks or like Mr. Rogers smiley face or something like that. So if you know a little info about this person, you could take a cute approach like that. Andrew says, how about announcement? Um, I mean, you could try it. That, I, I, I think that's a little too vague, a little too general. It almost feels like it might be a mistake or a spam thing, something like that. I would just go with something more human, like, hey, or hello, or if you know the person's name, like, hey, Greg, something like that. Honestly, like, just wanted to introduce myself, probably covers it for most of these situations, yeah. Happy Thursday, Alexandra. Yeah, you could try that for sure. Absolutely. Can't wait to share something. You could say something like, I mean, for the three things email, the subject line is literally just three things or two things or something you might want to see or something like that. There was a really famous uh, like 
study that came out a couple of years ago where they looked at which email subject lines seem to trigger the most opens. And the bottom line was like the simpler, the better. Like President Barack Obama for one of his campaigns sent out a newsletter to his mailing list and the subject line was just, hi. <laughs> and like, and of course people saw Obama and hi in their inbox and they were like, oh man. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, uh, not, uh, even if you're not Barack Obama, I think going with just that really simple touch is sometimes the best way to go, especially for this one-on-one -on -one kind of email where you're writing to just one person. Okay, so now let's look at one more email approach, and this next one is more of the one-to-many type of message. So this is one you could use as an email newsletter that's going out to however many subscribers you have. Maybe you have five subscribers, maybe you have five million subscribers, but this is the one-to-many style. So, problem solution. And some of you might recognize this exact email because this is one that Miss Susan Hyatt sent out to her list to promote this very event, Succeed and Sell. I love this. It's a really, really effective one. And it goes like this. You start the newsletter by saying, problem. And in the instance of the newsletter that Susan Hyatt sent out, you want to find clients, get booked and get paid. You've been trying to market your services online, but things aren't working and it's super frustrating. You're tired of feeling invisible and tired of all the money stress. You want more clients and payments rolling in consistently. And let's be honest, this pandemic certainly is not helping. Wah, wah. Wah, wah, right? Solution, come to succeed and sell. I got the medicine you need. I got what you want. Come to this virtual three-part workshop. The cost is free. And by the way, this approach works whether the cost is free or the cost is a million dollars. It doesn't matter. That's just a detail that's part of this. The time commitment, whatever it is, 50 minutes a day, three days in a row, et cetera, et cetera. A little more info, here's the schedule, here's the lineup of instructors, yada, yada, yada. And then again, feel no do, what's the do? RSVP, click here to register, it's super clear, here's the link, we will see you there. So the reason why this works so effectively, you are right off the bat acknowledging you understand exactly what your subscriber your potential client, your potential customer, you understand their predicament. You are empathizing. You're putting yourself in their shoes. You know what's keeping them awake at night. You know what's stressing them out. And you acknowledge it. You, can, you acknowledge it in a clear and welcoming way. So you say, look, I get it. You want to find more clients. You want to make more money. You're tired of all this money stress. You want consistency, right? And Susan's acknowledging, I know that this pandemic might have turned your world upside down. This, maybe it feels like this is really not helping and things are worse than ever. Solution, come to this free workshop. I'm going to uplift you. I'm going to inspire you. I'm going to give you some great ideas. You are going to leave better than you came. Okay? That is the solution. And then all of this is just the logistical information about the experience. So... I see the questions, we'll acknowledge that in a moment. So here's the blank version, problem, and you just can fill in the blanks. You want whatever your client wants. You want to launch a career as a performing artist and get to Broadway. You want to feel at home in your body and look in the mirror and love what you see. You wanna open your closet and feel excited about the clothes instead of overwhelmed. You want peace in your household, less arguing and fighting. Whatever it is that they want, you state what they want. You've been trying to, you can acknowledge, you know, maybe they've been trying to solve this dilemma, this problem on their own. You're tired of whatever it is that they're tired of. You're tired of starting projects and never finishing. You're tired of, you know, trying to style your hair and it's just a frizzy nightmare. Whatever it is, whatever they're tired of. You're tired of the fact that your dog never listens to you and he keeps pooping in the middle of the floor. What the <laughs> You're tired of whatever. Solution. You are the solution, right? You've created an amazing experience, a program, a consulting package, a coaching service. It could be free. Maybe it's not free. Whatever. Solution is work with me. 
right? Hang with me. I've got something that can really help you. And then for the cost, whatever it is. And there's different schools of thought on this. You know, some people say, hmm, maybe don't put the cost right in the email. Maybe have them visit your website or consult with you, have a discovery phone call first. Personally, I like to put the cost right up front. I like to just drop it in, no confusion. That feels right in my hut, in my heart and gut. So if it's free, say it's free. If it's $100, it's $100. Is it $10,000? Whatever. Personally, as a consumer, I appreciate that. And your clients may feel the same way. But you got to trust your instincts on this. You know, every brand, every audience is a little bit different. Okay? So trust your hut, your heart and gut. It can be really nice to spell out the time commitment. You know, a lot of people, you know, they're, they're concerned about financial investments, but even more than that, they're thinking about the time commitment, the time investment. How much time is this going to take? How much time away from my family? How much time away from my spouse? So say what it is. Is it 50 minutes a day, three days in a row? Is it a time commitment of five hours a week? People appreciate that information. So it's always nice when you're describing an offer, whether it's a one-time consulting hour with you or whether it's a year-long program or whatever it is, tell the client or the potential client, what are you going to walk away with? What are they going to have or accomplish or feel like when they finish? On the other side of this hour, on the other side of this year, whatever it is, what are they going to have? Make a list of what that is. That's really what gets them excited because now they're thinking later down the line and going, well, I want all of that. You know, I want to plan to find more clients. I want email templates that I can send out today. I want to feel uplifted and excited. Yes, 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 yes. I want to walk away with all that. So it can be really powerful to make a quick list of what they're going to walk away with. And again, different ways you can approach this. You can say, you'll walk away with bullet point, bullet point, bullet point. You can say, here's what you'll have by the end. You can say, here's what you'll leave with. You can say, here's the benefits of coming. You can say, here's why you'll love this. So there's lots of different ways that you can phrase this, but the gist of it is you're letting them know, this is what you're gonna have. This is who you're gonna be at the end of this experience. And then of course you can include any other info that might be interesting or exciting for them to know. Are there gonna be special guests? Is there gonna be a slip and slide? Is there gonna be a bouncy castle? Are there gonna be prizes? Like, is David Blaine gonna be there levitating? Like, what's gonna happen? That's always fun to include. <laughs> There's a unicorn sprinkler involved. Susan, I want a unicorn sprinkler so bad. <laughs> We're sending you one. Oh my gosh, I'm going to send a photo of me in my new bathing suit on the unicorn. I'm writing this down because, or Mallory, <laughs> tell Bianca, she's got to send her one ASAP. Yes, that's for my summer of yes. Yeah, so interesting, in the comments, a lot of people are saying cost up front is the best. They appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that too. It can help to diminish the sticker shock for sure. And then of course, call to action, the do piece of feel no do. What do they need to do right now in order to be a part of this? Maybe they make a deposit, maybe they RSVP, maybe they contact you via email, whatever it is, tell them exactly what they need to do right now. And I will say, just as a very small note, depending on the length of this newsletter or email, if it's getting pretty long, that's okay, but maybe you want to have the call to action at the very beginning and then again at the very end, just so it doesn't get lost. So at the very beginning, you could say like, you know, I'm offering a free virtual event called Succeed and Sell RSVP here, and here's all the info. And then you go into the info, and then again at the bottom, you have that link to RSVP once again. The benefit of doing that is that, you know, if someone's reading this on their phone and they're scrolling really quickly, they're not going to miss the call to action because you put it right up top. That's a very small detail, but it can help for sure. Okay, you guys. So before we wrap up with a few last little thingy things about how to sell gracefully amidst the pandemic, I want to know which of these three emails are you going to use? right away. Which one is the most exciting to you? Do you like the three things email? Do you like the I'm going to introduce myself email? The problem solution email? Is there one of those that you're especially excited to play with and send out? 
Nice. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, this is so exciting. I cannot wait. I love the three things too. And I've been the recipient yeah. of the three things from Alex sure like <laughs> thousands of times. And every time she sends it, I'm like, yes. Like I like I can't message her fast enough. <laughs> so funny. I know, Susan, you have now you're seeing the inner workings of my own brain <laughs> when I email you. You're like, this works because this lady right here hosting this webinar is like yeah. <laughs> It's true. So good. It's so clear. Okay. I'm so busy that it's like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. yes. That's right. So uh, my most recent book, the checklist book, which is all about how human brains love checklists and how oh Susan's grabbing her copy. Yes. <laughs> so as part of my research for this book, I came across this study that shows that the human brain, even if you're extremely intelligent, as everyone in this room is, we can really only retain about four pieces of information, like three or four pieces at a time. You start throwing more than four things at people, boom, our brains just shut down, we can't handle it, it's too much. That's why making a checklist is so powerful because it's like an extra storage tank for your brain. You can write down the 20 things that you need to do today, get it out of your brain and on paper. So hearkening back to the three things email, there's a reason why this email is called three things, not 10 things, right? Because that's too overwhelming for your recipient. You want to keep it short. You want to keep it brief. You want to honor the fact that they're a busy human being with a lot going on and you don't want to throw a million pieces of information at them. Three. Three is the magic number. Okay, so let's wrap things up, you guys. I know we've gone a little over time already and I want to... Well, and I have a lot to say still. I know. Okay, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up real quick. Here we go. <laughs> So how to sell gracefully amidst the pandemic. We'll go through this really quickly. And I know you guys already know this intuitively, but sometimes it's helpful just to roll through. So selling gracefully, whether you're selling face-to-face, -face, on the phone, Zoom, on social media, email, wherever you're selling, empathy, 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 right? And this is true all the time, not just during the pandemic. Empathy makes you a stronger entrepreneur. You want to put yourself in that person's situation. What are they feeling? What are they dealing with? What are they worrying about? Are they worrying about money? Are they worrying about their health? Are they feeling overwhelmed? Are they adjusting to working from home and homeschooling their kid and their house just feels like total chaos and they just need some relief? What would feel like a miracle for this person right now? If you could wave a magic wand and grant a miracle for your client, what is that miracle that they want? Is it more free time? Is it more confidence? Is it a self-care routine that they can really do consistently? Whatever miracle that they want, you're here to deliver it, okay? So tune into your heart. What are they feeling? What are they craving? What is that miracle that they want? And if you're delivering the miracle that they want, then you will never be annoying. You will never be intrusive. You will always be that day maker, that person for when they receive an email from you, they're like, oh, thank God, I can't wait to read this. I know it's gonna be something good, right? Other ways to sell gracefully in a pandemic, options, right? Give them options. Maybe you wanna offer a free option of your program that's like a mini, mini little taste, a regular option, and then like an elevated or VIP deluxe package. Something for everyone. Nobody is excluded. Everyone in your community, regardless of their current financial situation, is invited to get some help. This is a very generous way to run your business. It's very compassionate. It's very welcoming. Like we say here in Hawaii, ekomo mai, everyone welcome. Mm. So you find a way to do this when you're still making money, right? Because there's going to be people who want the regular option, the VIP option, and above. So options. Payment plans. Susan, are you noticing that a lot of people are going for payment plans, especially right now? Absolutely. So, and, and one thing that we have done is um, extended our payment plans well beyond what we normally do. Mm -hmm. so yeah. You guys will see, like when I get to the payment plan portion for on the six, we've gone well beyond what we normally would. And even on like super low price things, we've offered extended payment plans just because of what's happening right now. 
That's right. So that's another way of compassionately acknowledging, hey, I get it. Things are weird right now. The future is mysterious. We're all in a period of upheaval. So let me help you out. Let me make this a little easier for you to say yes, to take the positive action that you want to take. Be a day maker. We talked about this, right? So every email you send, it's you're not, yes, you're selling, yes, you're marketing, but even above and beyond that, you're here to make their day better than it was before. You're here to share something inspiring, share a beautiful message, share a, a, some hope, some inspiration, or an action step that they can take right now that's gonna improve their day. So every single email you send is an opportunity for you to be a day maker. And then lastly, to harken back to the very beginning, full circle, don't assume that people don't want to invest right now. They do. People do want to invest. People want to feel healthier, mentally stronger, physically stronger, happier. They want meaning. They want fulfillment. They want things to do. A lot of people are bored and need stimulation and connection, all of the things that you offer. They need you. They want you. Don't cut yourself off from service and from making money because you, like me, about a month ago, are making an erroneous assumption that people don't want what you're offering. You might be totally wrong about that. So go, sell, send, publish, ask, serve, help, and get that money. <laughs> With that, Let's turn it over to Susan because she's got some great things for you to do next. Yeah, don't go away because uh, like yesterday, um, those of you who stay till the end, I'm going to direct you to do something inside Rich Coach Club and then you can um, be entered to win a spot in summer of yes. So what? it's all very exciting. <laughs> um, also, this entire time, I have been waiting for my landscape guy to show up to plant <laughs> all my bushes and trees. And you watch, he's going to ring my doorbell while I'm trying to talk. Um, <laughs> so here we go, Pookie Poos. Um, so on the six is one of my masterminds. It's for peeps who are on their way or want to be on their way to six figures or to exceed six figures. It's six months of a commitment. Um, I have some amazing testimonials, which Alex, I know you saw these because we- They're so good. I was like, woody over these. <laughs> so good. Uh, my current group is killing it. Um, so this is Jessica Miller and she has generated in just five months so far this year, close to $90,000. She calls it the on the six voodoo and <laughs> that it's the best decision she ever made. So it, I'm super excited for her. This is Jackie Gartman. Many of you may know Jackie. She is a coaching legend and she's like, this is the busiest I have ever been, which I'm super proud of. Um, Kimberly had her first launch in January. So immediately after joining on the six, 20K immediately, it was her best business month ever of her whole career. Um, Caitlin Lyons, who exited corporate and now just sold out her group program. She is such a great example of how play makes you rich. Um, so I'm super proud of her. And Emily was our guest expert for the first day. She gave everybody amazing tips. If you haven't watched that replay about how to take your live event and do it online, that she dropped so many truth bombs. You want to watch that. But she, her whole business was in-person events and she pivoted wow. to online virtual events and had her highest earning month in business ever in May. Wow. Um, no joke. And this is Stacy, who's amazing. And she talks about how she's really come into owning her identity as a coach and as a business owner and how it's now go time. We love that. And Allison. So she talks about how it's been instrumental for her setting up her systems, getting started with regular content, growing her email list. Like she just went from zero to her first 60 members so, you know, these are all like, yes, the proof is in the profit, but many of them are doing such amazing foundational work to just skyrocket for the second half of the year. Oh my gosh. So Alessandra, this is not Jackie Gartman. This is Aless Dr. Alessandra Duke. Um, just had her first national event offering 
So just like a whole variety of wins from these peeps. So I want to talk about what you get, and it's a lot. So I know Alex just said you can't contain more than three things in your brain. <laughs> so I want you to try because this is a lot. <laughs> All right. So it's a six month program where you get all these live classes with me and my team. You also get private one on one sessions with me, with Anna Mika, who's our company COO. She is an amazing strategist. So right out of the gate, 90 minutes with her to create your strategy for the next six months. Um, ass kickings from me and from Patty Rentapa, who is our head coach. You get to be part of the most uplifting community online. These ladies light up that Facebook group every day supporting each other. Mm. I get 12 money generating assignments and challenges. Yes. A seat in this one's yeah. writing <laughs> workshop, right? So Alex just gave you three samples of emails that work but her email writing workshop takes it to another level. Can I talk about it for one hot sec? You can talk about it for one hot sec while I go tell my landscape or something. I'll be right back. <laughs> talk okay. about it. So this is so exciting. So the email class is, I just shared with you guys like three email templates and three examples. So the email class has about 30, I think. So there's tons of email templates all different kinds of situations, sales, and other situations. So if someone emails you and they want a refund, if someone hasn't paid their invoice yet, if someone is overstepping a boundary, if there's a client that you need to fire in a graceful, gentle, win-win kind of way, there's email templates for like pretty much every business scenario that I can think of. And there's even personal email templates that you can use for your personal life. So an email to say politely, no, I, I can't meet you for coffee this week or whatever you want. So there's all kinds of email templates, there's email classes, and there's interactive experiences with me, like a push send party, a send day where we all get together at the same time, co-working style virtually. You write that one email that you've been stalling on, that you've been like hesitating on for whatever reason, and then three, two, one, like the New Year's Eve ball drop, we all click send at the exact same moment, right? I know. So we're all in it together and there's going to be so much like excitement. I mean, honestly, I'm so stoked about this. I can't wait. We're going to make emails fun again. <laughs> So obviously the price of the mastermind is worth the email writing workshop is basically <laughs> what we're saying. So I'm so excited about it. Emails. <laughs> emails. Um, okay. So in addition to all that, you get 12 live classes with me. We kick off July 7th, 12 co-working sessions with Patty Rantapa. Mm -hmm. So like I give you stuff to do, then you go have co-working sessions with Patty with, and everybody else. 12 live marketing sessions with Anna Mika. So our chief strategist, honest to God, this woman is so brilliant. Like that alone is worth, like each piece of this is worth the investment. Um, we also are gonna have a virtual get it done retreat. So, in addition to live classes with me, Anna Patty, private sessions with me, Anna Patty, a seat in Alex's email course, you also will be part of an amazing two day virtual retreat with mm -hmm. your cohorts. You also get access to our newest baby, In Demand. I see many of you here who are In Demand customers. You can tell us in the chat what you think of it, but I'm pretty darn proud of it. And you get one of my swag boxes. So <laughs> this is the one that I sent out for summer of, yes! Oh my gosh, it is um, so cute. So cute and it's full. Y'all know I give good swag. So it's full of stuff that's gonna help you grow your business as well as a 30 day action plan once you join. I feel like the Ginzu Knife Lady. Like, and that's not all. <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you visit, I know Mallory's probably lighting up the chat with the URL. If you visit this URL, um, what you do is you complete an application 
it's a type form and it looks like that when you get started and then somebody will set up a time to have a consult call with Patty. Now here's the upfront investment. We just talked about this, no surprises. It's 9997, okay? But we do have payment plans available. So the team is me. There's my unicorn in the background you're gonna get, Alex. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> there's Patty, there's Anna. And there's the lovely Bianca, um, who is my assistant in all of this. So when you, um, when you look at this investment, we have several payment plans available. It's, we are calling today pay in full Thursday. <laughs> we would appreciate that. But we have a one pay, a three pay, a six pay, a nine pay. So get your booty in there, get your application in. So you can have a chat with the lovely Patty about the program and see if it's right for y'all. Um, but I want to see if they're, oh, the boxes are hot. Oh, yay, Kelly. And I love the energy behind that. I love, um, oh, so they're all live. Everything is live, Kelly, everything. Um, of course, we provide replays. The boxes are hot. So if you have any questions for me, I'm here to answer your questions. The, the classes with me are live. The classes with Anna are live. The classes, the co-working time with Patty is live. And then um, in demand is what's digital. You just, you get access to that. Mm. I have a question that people might be wondering. Yes. So this is for people who are not currently making 100K per year, but want to be, and then eventually go beyond. And is it only for coaches, like wellness coaches, life coaches, or is it for like anyone with a service-based business or what's the dealio? Any female entrepreneur who wants to do business is basically it. And particularly if you want to do business online, this is really mm -hmm. perfect for that. Patricia goes, I just asked that. Okay. <laughs> so we have, we have, I mean, we have a um, very successful working artist in the group this time. So it's a real variety of coaches and what I call coaching adjacent businesses. So um, service providers that, that run well, blend well with uh, this life coaching community. Mm, yeah. All right. I don't see any other questions, but we start, oh, I need to tell y'all what to do. Okay, so again, if you go into Rich Coach Club and you tell us, we'll start a thread. If you tell us what email you're gonna send and that you did it, like you don't have to necessarily show proof like a screenshot, it's the honor <laughs> system. But here's the email I'm gonna send and by tomorrow, tell us you did it you're gonna be entered to win a spot in the Summer of Yes program. Yeah. And you will get one of those beautiful swag boxes sent to you. Mm, that's so, so fun. We wanna make sure you're sending those emails and making that money. Definitely, yes. Susan, you're amazing. Alex, so are you. You are so amazing. It's, and all y'all watching, like I've, I've known Susan now almost nine years, I think. It's wild. Ten. Ten. Years, yeah. And this woman is the real deal. Like, every time I spend time with her, I feel blessed that I get to text with her. I feel like I've won the golden ticket. I mean, she's one of those people, you just hang out with her, and you feel stronger, braver, more action-oriented. Like, you almost can't help but start making more money just hanging out with her because she just reminds you to like, just do it. Ask for what you want. Get that email out there. Stop waiting for perfection. Launch it. Do it. Move. Move. One of Susan's phrases that she loves to say is, it's go time. <laughs> I mean, if you have the privilege of hanging out with her for six months and learning from her and her team, like, unless you are like in a coma, I can't imagine that you would not 
start making significantly more money <laughs> because she's really just amazing. Not just at helping women make more money, but just helping women become unstoppable. I mean, That's with that, I gotta take my jacket off. You gonna make me cry, I'm sweating. I'm sweating under this jacket. Um, it's real. Like you are, you are an, I'm honored to call you a colleague, a client, and most of all, a friend. And um, yeah, anyone who gets to hang with you for six months is a lucky duck. And that is oh, that. You're so amazing. For real. So, uh, aw, you guys are so sweet. Well, Alex, I feel completely blessed. I always tell the joke that, you know how if you have a significant other, you might have like that weird nightmare that they've left you and you're yeah. up in a panic. I don't <laughs> really have that nightmare about the silver fox, but I do have it about Alex. <laughs> like, no, she can never leave. Um, <laughs> So. But Patricia, Patricia asked, would you recommend this for people just starting out? Yes. Um, so Clear Coaches is no longer, Patricia. So I killed my darling Clear Coaches and created In Demand. And so that's the digital replacement for Clear Coaches. Um, and it, it, it's not the difference. But so in demand or clear coaches was a digital experience and the mastermind is a live hands on experience. So there's a big difference between what you're doing. Um, so advice gears to just starting out is absolutely we have a we have a mix. So we have people just starting out and on the six and we have like, for example, Jackie Gartman, who's tremendously experienced, you know, 13 plus years in the business. Um, who wanted to be in there because she needed a lot of systems help and just learning how to do things in a different way. Her business is mostly referral based. She really wanted to learn how to do things in a more online way. And so um, it's a different, it's a different animal. That makes sense. Um, so Kelly Ann Schaefer, I knew you were going to ask me this. If we already <laughs> bought in demand, is there a price shift for that at all? We will talk. Why don't you, why don't you put, get your application in and we'll take care of you. <laughs> the one year mastermind um, is for entrepreneurs making above a hundred K and that runs January through November. So we'll start filling that probably in September for a January start. Hmm. Why is it called On the Six? Where's that name from? On the Six. So you're laughing because you know. I know. Um, I was a rhetorical question, but they might not know. <laughs> it's so fun um, because when JLo was trying to hit it big, and she wasn't famous. She used to ride the six train, the this, uh, this subway. And her first breakout album, CD, was called On the Six. And so I'm like, that's what we doing. We on the six too. Riding to that beautiful destiny. Mm -hmm. Ride that train. It's go time. It's go time. <laughs> yeah, and I love that you named it in honor of J-Lo. I'm wearing my J-Lo hoops today. Uh, because she's such a great example of a woman who is like unapologetically ambitious, loves making money, loves investing her money, doing philanthropic work, but also like taking care of her family, taking care of her mom, taking care of her people, and is just like strong and out there and works hard and gets big results and has longevity and sustainability to her career, right? Like she's been doing her thing for decades. So what a perfect sort of spirit animal for this mastermind. Totally. <laughs> Kelly says, I thought it had to do with getting to six figures. It does. I just, it's for people getting to six figures, but it's cute that Jayla was on the six. Yeah. So it, it's a double entendre. Um, Kimberly wants to know about payment plans. So Kimberly, if you want to, I think um, Mallory, who's on here can help you with that. And you can also just we can email and message about what the actual payment plans are. But if you want, if you're interested, get your application in and Patty will get on the phone with you when you apply and go through everything thoroughly with you. Cause I know you'll probably have some residual questions as well. But anyway, we start July 7th. So get your app in. Alex, thank you friend. Ooh. I heart you. Ooh. Love you long time. 
What a delight. And I can't wait to hear about people sending out their emails. I want, I would love to hear what kind of results you get. Maybe Susan can fill me in and you guys send those emails out. You never know. One email can change your whole week, your whole month, your whole quarter. I've had experiences of sending out that one email that unlocks a door that leads to a $10,000 client package or whatever it is. Like you just got to ask, you got to send it out there. Like Susan says, ask for everything. <laughs> ask for everything. Although my support inbox, everybody laughs. They're like, you got to stop saying ask for everything because this is out of control. <laughs> like, like, ask other people for everything. Um, anyway, just kidding. All right. Uh, thank you so much. I'm going to go supervise the magnolia trees and Ooh. the great myrtles being planted. I'm so excited. Like, yeah, oh. Also, y'all keep your eyes peeled because I'm having a garden party in my what? backyard virtually. I'm inviting everybody to a garden party to celebrate Summer of Yes. And I think it's happening like next week. Look at these, but this is almost not fair. Those are real flowers. I picked these outside my, I was actually feeling a little down this morning and I went for a walk because Susan always says, if you move your body, you'll feel better. <laughs> True, yeah. and I noticed this insanely beautiful plumeria tree, and there's these flowers everywhere, and I immediately felt better. It's the little things, you know. It's Listen, little... you up there with that aloha magic. Look at that flower. Like she sends me videos of her view and her coconuts and her fresh pineapple <laughs> juice, and I'm like, girl, I got me some amino energy, and my beagle's got a cone on his head. But I am still living my best life. I still am. Oh. All right, I gotta go. Make sure he's not digging holes in the wrong place. I love everybody. Sign up. Thanks All right, bye, y'all.